Today we're going to be talking about DNA replication and in specifics the way a DNA replication fork works. Um, DNA replication's objective is to take one parent strand of DNA and create two double helix DNA strands. Um, we are going to start by looking at the main fundamentals of how DNA replicates. So DNA replication begins at replication origins, which are usually marked by a specific sequence of base pairs. So if I was to represent this, I would show these two strands, one's in the five prime, to three prime, and the other is going to be in the three prime to five prime. Now these strands have the base pairs A, T, C, G in between them, um, which are held together primarily by hydrogen bonding. Um, hydrogen bonding is a main reason that the DNA double helix is very stable, um, a molecule, and it is due to this hydrogen bonding that DNA will not spontaneously replicate in the cell. Um, that being said, the individual hydrogen bonds holding together AT and then separately CG are relatively weak bonds, um, which can be broken by helicase. Um, so we're going to represent helicase with a triangle. Helicase. We're going to represent DNA polymerase, which we'll talk about a little bit later in this video with the square. So DNA polymerase, polymerase. And then we're going to rec we're going to show the circle as being RNA primase. RNA primase. Okay, and so this, these are the three main proteins that we are going to be following that play a major role in DNA replication. So looking at this DNA strand, we see that it is connected in the two strands, both going opposite, five prime to three prime, and then the other strand going from three prime prime to five prime. Now, it, it is known that the AT bonds in DNA um, have two hydrogen bonds connecting them, whereas the CG cytosine guanine bonds have three hydrogen bonds connecting them. This makes it more difficult for the helicase to separate the CG bonds, however, not impossible. Um, but for this reason, we usually see that there are more AT bonds um, at the site of replication origins. And these sites are usually marked by a specific sequence of base pairs, um, which helicase can recognize and then latch onto and separate the DNA into two separate strands. Um, so as helicase unwinds this, we're going to see this strand of DNA start to look something like this. We're going to see both of these strands and they're going to kind of start forking off from each other. Um, now what we're going to see very shortly that's very important is DNA um, will only replicate in the 5 prime to 3 prime um, direction. Um, therefore one strand is going to be the leading strand, which is going to be continuously replicated by DNA polymerase, whereas the other strand, which is in the 3 prime to 5 prime direction, is going to be called the lagging strand. And this strand is going to be replicated in pieces um, due to the fact that DNA polymerase can only go in the 5 prime to 3 prime direction. 
Um, so I'm going to label that for you right here. So this is the lagging strand. And this is, or rather, this is the leading strand. And this is the lagging strand. I'm just going to open up a new file so we can clean some of this up. So now our DNA is looking somewhat like this. We have it forking off in each direction. Um, and this is after helicases binded to it and separated the DNA. So right now we are going to have Let me just draw everything back in. So we have three prime, we have five prime, and we said that our triangle was going to be helicase. So let's say our triangle is right here. It's working on unwinding this next section going to our left. And we have this strand, which just is pairs that are not matched. So for example, this might be A, this might be T, this might be C, and this might be G, and so on and so forth. Now, DNA polymerase, which we said was going to be the square, is going to latch onto this leading strand, and it is going to begin moving towards the three prime direction and synthesizing new a new DNA strand um, to make a double helix um, and so this will continue until it reaches the stop codon um, similarly on the lagging strand we are going to have RNA primase attached right here which we said was going to be a circle RNA and DNA. I'm not going to write it all in just to represent it. And RNA primase is going to put a little bit of a primer on here um, so that DNA primase can now attach and start synthesizing the, the strand of the new strand of DNA. Um, now, the way that this DNA is being replicated is called semi-conservative replication, um, which is when there is one parental strand of DNA, and when DNA is replicated, both strands of that parental DNA are kept intact, but they're separated into the two new strands. So for example, one parent strand will be with a new strand so I can draw this in colors so black will be the parent strand and the red is going to be the new strand and so this is the definition of semi-conservative in that the parental strands are still there but new strands are made up of new DNA that was pulled from the cell and synthesized by DNA polymerase. Now, going back to this lagging strand, we have DNA polymerase attaching after the RNA primase has connected. And we're going to see that it is going to constantly keep redoing this process right here um, because eventually DNA polymerase is going to catch up to helicase and it's going to stop and RNA primase is going to have to reconnect and the process will keep repeating itself. 
Now if we look at this process right here, we're going to see that DNA polymerase, which to be a bit more specific is actually DNA polymerase 3, is the one that's synthesizing this new strand of DNA. And due to the Okazaki fragments on the lagging strand, which are the stop and go repeat of the RNA primase connecting and then the DNA polymerase 3 connecting and synthesizing that new strand, um, it is not one continuous synthesization of the new strand of DNA. Therefore we have a little bit of RNA here in red and then we'll have a little bit of DNA for a little while in blue and then we'll go back to the RNA in red for a little bit and back to the blue for the DNA. And so we constantly have this back and forth going between the RNA primer and the DNA that's been newly synthesized. And so what the cell does to correct this is DNA polymerase 1 will come in and remove this RNA primer and make it all one strand of DNA. And so now it's one continuous strand of DNA even though that's not how it was originally synthesized. Um, and so to, to emphasize on this just a bit more clearly um, when or rather to represent it a bit more clearly um, let me just trust what the finished product might look like down here. So eventually we're gonna have most of this separated by helicase and make this a little bit bigger by helicase and so we got a few left there 5 prime, 3 prime, 3 prime, 5 prime and so let me draw all these original bases I'm only going to draw a few, you, you'll, you'll end up getting the idea and then what I'm going to also do is I'm going to draw the newly synthesized DNA in the color red. Um, just because red's a good color, it stands out. And so what these are going to look like is something like this. In which this is the 5 prime end of it. And this is the 3 prime right here. And this is connecting all those nucleotide base nitrogenous bases and this is the new strand of your DNA this is your semi-conservative method of creating DNA and so over here we're gonna have three prime and over here don't have a lot of room but that's gonna be five prime again it's gonna connect and the lagging strand is now one continuous strand of DNA um, due to DNA polymerase 1 coming in and removing the D RNA primer that was placed by RNA primase. Okay, so this is how DNA replicates. Um, this is an overall description of how the whole process works and how helicase is one to unwind it and RNA primase and DNA polymerase 1 and 3 play a major role in synthesizing these new strands of DNA. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and have a nice day.